Yeah, I love this so much. A girl like me. Oh my god, it's gay. Boys and girls can all be queens every single day. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucin. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer, and now a podcaster. Woo. And today I'm going to be reacting to Chapel Roan's The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. Let's go. Cool. Okay, so I know nothing about this artist. I haven't heard any of the songs. Totally fresh on this, but I've heard a lot of people chatting about this album and by the sounds of it i feel like it's like completely up my street <laughs> so i feel like i'm gonna have a good time today i'm quite excited to jump into this um, if you are new to the channel then make sure to subscribe if you've been around here a while then make sure to check out the patreon where you can watch my videos unedited with no cuts in any of the songs also, if you want extra content from me, extra chat, I have a podcast. It's called Criminally Underrated, where we talk about underrated songs from the biggest artists. I have episodes on Lady Gaga, on Florence and the Machine, on Queen, on Taylor, and one on Paramore. So make sure to go and check out those. I'll leave all the links for everything in the description. And you can peruse my entire catalogue of stuff that I do. <laughs> okay, let's just jump right into this. First song. This is Feminomenum. Feminomenum. Feminomenon. Yeah, like a phenomenon, but a feminomenon. So, female phenomenon. <laughs> Let's go. Oh. Okay. Classic strings. Very Bridgerton. Same old story time again. Cool. Okay. You sent him pictures and playlists and phone sex. I like the kind of. Woo. Woo. Like her vocal delivery. She's like playing up the kind of girly. Vibes. Her voice reminds me of Olivia Rodriguez, actually. A little bit. Hit it like, get Ooh. Make a bitch. Fun. Get it. I was not expecting where I was expecting it to go. Can you play a song with a fucking beat? Hit it. Hit it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, this is gay. <laughs> Feminine. <laughs> Love it. So it's kind of got this melodramatic vibe. Real cool sense of humor. Got what you wanted, so stop feeling sorry. It's almost like she's kind of taking the mick out of this like generation of female pop songwriter, you know? I'm getting that vibe. Play a song with a fucking beat, you know? <laughs> Can you play a song with a fucking beat? <laughs> it's so mad. It's really cartoon, isn't it? It's feminine, no. Feminine, no. <laughs> Can't say it. <laughs> and you know what you need, and so does he. Does it happen? No. But does it happen? No. I love it. <laughs> feminine nomin. A feminine nomin. I love it. It's like so cheesy, but like in such a good way. Get it hot like Papa John. Get it hot like Papa John. I'm obsessed. This is so like kind of cute, quirky, funny, like genuinely funny. Obsessed. Like that is so fun. Like it's really giving me like a little bit take the piss, not taking herself too seriously. I feel like she kind of maybe feels part of that group of singer songwriters like Taylor and Olivia and Phoebe and uh, yeah, all of the above, the current cohort but is kind of part of it, but also taking the mick at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of energy I'm getting from that song. But it also feels quite celebratory of this kind of female empowerment movement at the same time. So it's kind of got lots of stuff going on. It's mental, really cartoonish, like that build up into the, can you play some fuck, something with a fucking beat? It's just so ridiculous. And I'm obsessed. <laughs> and like some of those lyrics, get it hot like Papa John. <laughs> It's like towing the line with like that really like camp. Oh, it's camp. That's the word. That's the like perfect word for this is this camp as fucking Christmas. And I love it. <laughs> it's kind of almost like one of those kind of drag queen kind of songs, like a Bob the Drag Queen or, a, you know, one of those kind of really, really dumb <laughs> funny songs you know same old story time again got so close but then you lost it should have listened to your friends about his girlfriend back in box boston should have sent him pictures and playlists and phone sex he disappeared from the second that you said let's go coffee let's meet up i'm so sick of all my love so it's about ghosting really about the troubles of like modern dating as much as it's like 
kind of fun and like over the top and camp it does have like a, a kind of slightly critical looking at our society dating within our current the current dating landscape kind of lens as well so it works on a few levels it's quite cool and the feminine phenomenon <laughs> I can, we'll never say that right is like an empowerment message in itself isn't it so it feels like although it is a funny song and has so much humor in it it feels as if like there is a like an empowerment message within that which is such a cool kind of way to like, deliver a message like with a side of humor you know it's a feminine love it right next song this is red wine supernova wow. she was a play great i didn't know it's so totally all over the place, the production, in a really cool way. Nice. There was like a reverse clap thing in there that was really cool. The production style is very bright in your face, kind of giving me like post hyper pop kind of style. Love the melody in there. It's like really nice, catchy, beautiful melody. I like, I like you like you like no <laughs> You just told me want me to cuz I really want to. <laughs> fell in love with the thought of you. I fell in love with the thought of you. Yeah, that's something we've all been through, you know. So over. See, it's catchy already. <laughs> I wonder what the red wine, red, red wine supernova is about. Like, I'm not sure what that lyric is about. <laughs> Great. I don't know what the red wine is. You're gonna have to tell me in the comments. I bet it's something lewd that I'm not picking up on. <laughs> Love it. I really like how the verses are so kind of like constant, upbeat, like really kind of more in your face. And then the chorus is slow down for this kind of big chant of like something a little bit more earnest, you know, really cool kind of like thing going on there between verse and chorus. Really enjoy the kind of intelligence in that kind of songwriting approach, despite the fact that obviously it is knowingly written. And I guess that's kind of the line between like something being corny and bad and something being corny and absolutely brilliant. And I think she's on the brilliant side for me because it's like so knowing, you know, obviously some people can be corny and cheesy and like, not knowing of it and I think that's what makes it bad whereas like if you're corny and cheesy but it's very much what you're going for and you're very much in the know then it just makes it just so great and funny and witty you know that's really what I'm getting from these songs so far she was a playboy Bridget Bardot I don't know who that is she showed me things I didn't know she did it right there out on the deck pulled her canine teeth in this put her canine teeth in the side of my, neck, side of my neck so it's about like sex the kinky kind. <laughs> Guess I didn't quite think it through. Fell in love with the thought of you. Now I'm choked up, face down, burnt out. Baby, why don't you come over? Red nice, red, red wine supernova falling into me. I don't care that you're a stoner. Red wine supernova falling into me. So it's, it feels like she's fallen for a girl who is like the playboy, like very aloof, very like perfect in her mind, like this like dream person that she wants to get with. But the kind of... Like, I think we all kind of know that the truth of the matter is that she is really like, that. that's not kind of real, you know? It's like, I fell in love with the thought of you. I like what you like. Long hair, no bra, that's my type. That's right. <laughs> There's such an idea, especially when you're dating in the kind of modern landscape of like, and like online dating and meeting people online and stuff that people project what they want you to see. And so you can kind of like fall for the idea of something before you've even got to know someone and it's kind of one of these weird kind of like side effects of the kind of modern dating world that like previous generations like didn't necessarily have to deal with because they just got to know somebody face to face whereas like now we've kind of got all these weird hoops and things to kind of jump through and we don't really know what we're falling for you know that's the vibe that this is giving me um really cool very witty next song after midnight fun I love the production in this. It's really, really cool. Fun. 
<laughs> Couldn't be a good girl even if I tried. <laughs> Everything good happens after midnight. Cool. I love the groove of this. What is that song it's reminding me of? thesis for this album is like modern sex and dating, you know? <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, because there's that kind of open feeling, isn't there? You know, that kind of like, yes, I know that you two are a couple, but you might be open. Like that's kind of part of like modern dating and like what we navigate nowadays, you know? Freak in the club. <laughs> Such a good vibe. I really enjoy like just her melodies and the sense of like style that kind of permeates through all the songwriting. It's the kind of stuff you can listen to intently, but also like this song could be like on a playlist quite nicely, you know. Cool. Fun, yeah, definitely. It's all about modern dating, modern sex, going out after midnight and having, you know, a wild kind of time. You know, you don't really know what's going to happen, but you know, it's going to be good if it's gone midnight. <laughs> yeah, really cool. I really just like her point of view is just like to so totally, it's so stylish. It's a very specific point of view. And it's like, it feels like that she's come into this project with a real, such a clear sense of what she wanted to do with it. You know, cartoony, stylish, weird, quirky, funny about sex, about modern life. You know, it's like very like pinpoint, clear vision. Really good. My mama says nothing good happens when it's late and you're dancing alone. She's in my head saying, it's not attractive wearing that dress and red lipstick. This is what I wanted. This is what I like. So there's a sense of like breaking free from like the kind of like lessons that you've kind of internalized from when you were a child, which kind of come from a bit of like familial trauma, passing down like body image issues. This In this case, it's like, the for me, it's like the mother is passing down to her these insecurities about being too slutty. You know, and I feel like that's a generational difference is that like those things are changing, you know, especially millennials kind of have this kind of caught in between thing where it's like, well, our parents told us one thing and now we're experiencing a totally different reality and coming to terms with that. So that's kind of what that reads as for me and her like actually embracing that side of herself and actually being like, maybe I do want to claim my sexuality. Maybe I do want to be a slut. Maybe I do want to go out after midnight and have a great time. There's a liberation from those kind of old fashioned ideals, you know, can't be a good, good girl, even if I tried. Cause after midnight, I'm feeling kind of freaky. Maybe it's the club lights. I want to kiss your girlfriend if you don't mind. I love a little drama. Let's start a bar fight, bar fight. Cause everything good happens after midnight. Oh, I love that she's like being totally bisexual in this song. Like I cannot kiss your boyfriend if you don't mind. She's like, I am here for everything. I just love people and I'm here to have an amazing time. Yeah, I like how she's kind of dissecting not only her own feelings, but maybe the like kind of going back and thinking like, why do I feel like I need to liberate myself? You know, which is quite interesting. There's depth here. It's not just the kind of shiny pop uh, artifice, you know? Okay, next song, Coffee. It's my song, because I love coffee. Different vibe, huh? Can't meet you for dinner. Some words are exchanged. Just the just mm, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous melody and chords. Much more earnest. Meet you for coffee. Cause if we have one, it would be gorgeous. Every place leads back to your place. Gorgeous, love it. Beautiful chords. Love hearing her do like a ballad, you know? A bit of sadness in between all the kind of frivolity. Yeah. Oh shit. Let's not get drunk because we can't go there, you know? 
Every place leads back to you. Yeah. So it's like, if we get drunk, I'm going to end up going back to yours again. And we're going to be going back around in circles. I need to get over you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So let's not do coffee. Yeah. But I didn't love you coffee. Mm. It's never just coffee. It's never just coffee. Chords <sighs> are... The chords are giving me like classic Billy Joel kind of American songwriting vibes. Love it. Mm. Lovely. Really cool. Really love the chords. Really love the melody. The idea of this song is so clever to be like, take this detail, blow it out to a whole song, you know? This idea that like with this ex, she can't ever kind of truly get over them if she's still meeting up with them, even if it's just for coffee. And it seems to, to start with, she's like, let's just do coffee because if I go any further, then we know what's going to happen. We're going to repeat all the same old mistakes. I'm going to go back to your house. It's, you know, I'm never going to be able to get over you. And by the, t by the end, she realises, oh, we should not even do that because even coffee is like, you know, too much of a foot in the door, you know? And it's never, it's never just about me and for coffee. It's it's that kind of like the whole, oh, we've split up, let's, I, but I still want to be friends thing. And it's like, you know, that's not going to work because whenever you do meet up, it's just, you will end up falling back into the same old habits, you know? I like the history that she's building into this. So like, can't meet you for dinner at the Italian place. It's where I met your family. Some words were exchanged. I suggest the jazz bar on Marianne Street, but you buy me a drink and we know where that leads. So I'll meet you for coffee because if we have wine, you say that you want me. I know that's a lie. If I didn't love you, it would be fine. I'll meet you for coffee only for coffee. So that's the central kind of conceit. It's like, well, okay, so we've decided that we're going to meet up, but we can't go here because of this bit of history. We can't go here because of this and we'll end up drinking and then I'll go back to yours. So let's just do coffee. That's the simple thing. But yeah, by the end, the song develops and the turnaround, the twist is that actually we can't even do that. That's too much. Oh, that is actually really, really nicely written. Genuinely very nicely written, simple but clever lyrics, clever storyline. I love the added depth that the narrative brings to it. Like she's really showing us the history of their relationship by all these places that they can't go anymore. Ah, oh, great. Really love that. It's never just coffee. Okay. Oh, shit, fuck balls. Shit, fuck balls. Okay, let's go on to the next song. This is Casual. So it's like one person thinks it's a casual relationship, but one person doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Love it. Okay. We're in between. Is this still casual? Yeah. Love it. This song's reminding me of like Boy Genius, actually, weirdly. But yeah, she definitely has connective tissue with that side of pop landscape, you know. I literally love that. <laughs> yeah. The blurred lines, the kind of grey area. It's so easy to get caught in that. But then that other person always has like, oh no, we were always casual, you know? Yeah. I tried to be the chill girl, but honestly I'm not. Yeah, oh my god, I really like this. This one seems like production wise, stylistically, and actually the previous song, that they're less in the kind of cartoony vibe. So I'm, it's interesting, you know. But I really like this. This is such a perfect kind of explanation of this situation ship, you know? Yeah. Nice. Fab. Yeah, really good. Like, also kind of like very on the nose. <laughs> With the like, we're knee deep in the passenger seat and you're eating me out as a casual now. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know whether that's used for shocks 
or like whether she's trying to say actually like this is the reality of the situation, you know. But I, I really, really like that kind of idea that, like, this is the modern love song. As I was saying, like, earlier in the album, it's like, these are kind of the pitfalls of modern dating, like, what it's like to date in the modern age. And I've been in this exact, exact situation where you're, like, with somebody to start with, and it starts off as a casual thing. You start off, and it's sex, but then, like, you start reading into all the things that are happening between you like this like for me it was this guy who yeah we started off having sex but then he was like taking me on the really cute dates we, he was actually like this was like a few years ago and it was the first time I'd ever like held someone's hand in public and kissed a guy in public and all those kinds of things so it meant a lot to me in that sense and it felt like he was like really bringing me into his life and introduced me to all his friends and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, this isn't casual anymore. Like this, for me, it had gone past that point. There's a bit of both sides of it where he was kind of like having his cake and eating it a little bit, but still could hold on to the, oh, it's casual. So that when he kissed another guy right in front of me in the middle of a club, he could kind of get away with it. <laughs> well, he didn't actually. I gave him a lot of shit, but it was really heartbreaking for me. It was like really horrible. And it was because in his head, it was casual, but in mine, it was not at all. And that's kind of what she's song singing about in this song is this kind of grey area in between these two things where something starts off as casual, but obviously it's not gonna stay that way because we're doing really intimate shit. And it's like, if you're inviting me to meet your mum, you know, this isn't casual shit anymore. So how am I supposed to stay chill and how am I supposed to be that person? because clearly that's not what you're actually doing. It's having your cake and eating it too. And I very much fell for the same person. <laughs> anyway, I wrote a whole EP about it. It's coming out very soon. Actually, I got first few songs back from my friend who does my mastering for me this week. And I'm very excited. Anyway, it's called How to Break Your Own Heart. Very excited about it. Anyway, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, and then there's all this kind of like context of other people talking about what they're doing, like like trying to be casual, trying to be cool, kind of trying to be chill in front of not only this person that she's dating, but also everybody else. I hate that I let this drag on so long. Now I hate myself. Christ. Tried to be the chill girl, but honestly, I'm, ne I'm not. I literally, I love that. And I love the kind of earnest feeling of it, but still, still has a slight sense of humour to it. But like... It's clearly like well written and very earnest, very honest. And I just, I actually think that's just really, really, really well done. I really relate to it. Cool. Forgot to say at the beginning. What people love to do on my channel in the comment section is leave their top five songs from the album. So make sure to add your top five in the comments. I love going through them and reading all of your top fives. I'll be sharing my favorite song. Oops, shit, fuck, did not mean to do that. I'll be sharing my favorite song from the album at the end of the video. So make sure to stick around to the end. Next song, this is Super Graphic Ultra Modern Girl. Gonna be anime vibes, isn't it? Never waste a Friday night on a first date. <laughs> I wouldn't dance. I didn't ask a single question. <gasps> Fuck me, jeez. <laughs> the girl like me. Obsessed. After the kind of like real vulnerability of the previous song, this one feels like a bit of a walls up, I'm fierce, dramatic change. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, I'm obsessed, I love it. <laughs> oh, this is so good, I love this. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I love this so much. Sometimes you just need some fucking glossy pop. Oh. Oh, I'm obsessed, I love this so much. <laughs> this is so, so up my street. <laughs> Obsessed. Uh. Uh, this is like the fucking gay bop I need in my life right now. <laughs> I fucking love this. This is so sick. Oh my god, that was fucking amazing. I loved that. <laughs> it's like completely, completely my jam. I mean, I say that about so many genres, but like sometimes I'm just in the mood to listen to the brightest, most euphoric pop that you want ever want to hear. And that is the 
like the absolute jam like that is like totally totally in that world and when you need that vibe when you need someone to tell you to be a super sexy ultra modern girl like I just, sometimes you just need that okay <laughs> and this song is just that to the fucking nth degree oh i loved that that is so Good, uh, super graphic, ultra modern girl. That is 100 percent my favorite song so far. That is fierce. That brings together everything I was saying about at the beginning, like the humor, the cartoonish vibe, the pop, the shininess, the kind of really like hyper pop esque, post hyper pop kind of production style. Love it, <laughs> love it, <laughs> love it. So catchy, so euphoric. Oh god, so good. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm obsessed. <laughs> Okay, you know what they say, never waste a Friday night on a first date, but though I was in heels and my straight hair, so took him to the bar, this man wouldn't dart. <gasps> he didn't ask a single question. <gasps> he was wearing those fugly jeans. <laughs> I just love this. Oh God, it's so camp. I'm obsessed. Um, it didn't matter though. He doesn't have what it takes to be with a girl like me. Love it. Not over dramatic. I know what I want. We're leaving the planet and you can't come. <laughs> Uh Aha, I'm through with all those super mega bummer boys like you. Yeah, I need a super graphic, ultra modern girl like me. Oh my God, it's gay as well. Fuck like a stereotypical boy. I'm going to go explore the other side of my bisexuality and go and find a girl like me. Somebody on the level of me. Well, look at her moving, baby. She's the one. Yeah, I need a super graphic, ultra modern girl like me. Someone who lives up to what I deserve. Oh, telling secrets are on the mattress wearing nothing but glitter and lashes. At every party, we're the party shaking our asses, making out. Oh, so this is like, oh my God, I actually love this. This is like her queer dream. You know, this is like, this is the queer dream. I'm fucked with dating boys. I, I'm dreaming of being in love with a beautiful girl who lives up to her what I want to do and it's the perfect person for me. It's like such a dream romance song. I love that it's queer and I love that it's open hearted and euphoric. I'm obsessed. What that what from Tokyo to New York with everything you feel and everything you are. What that what flash the camera, flash the camera, flash the camera. You're a star. <laughs> Super graphic, ultra modern. Oh, you got me la 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 in. It's hyper sexy top to bottom girl like me. Fuck me. That is an absolute slam dunk of a song. Oh, just phenomenal oh, i can't get enough of it oh my god i love it okay next song <laughs> this is hot to go five six seven eight cheerleaders yeah Ooh. interesting is this blondie give me the 80s H O T T O G O, great. Great. Because she just knows how to do such a fun, quirky hook, you know? <laughs> it's kind of giving me an 80s horror movie. Also giving me like Rocky Horror, you know, like there's a bit of a theatrical kind of energy to this, you know, real high camp energy. So my vibe, I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I think I spent so much of this album just dancing. I love that. Just the idea of being like comparing yourself, I don't know, to like a pizza. It's that the vibe. <laughs> I'm obsessed. <laughs> uh, great. Again, in a club, right? Like, I think that's the vibe, right? I'm like out in a club. I'm ready to go. I'm so hot. <laughs> I'm dancing. I'm sweating. Fucking hell. It does get very hot in these underground clubs. And she's like, I'm ready to go. So you could be that one, right? Love it. Such a fun hook. H-O-T-T-O-T-O. -T -T -O. It's 
vibe being similar to Bad Idea, right? By Olivia Rodrigo. Similar vibe, huh? But obviously they were, these came out at a similar time, so they wouldn't have been listening to one another. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's the same kind of attitude, isn't it? But this one makes it much more camp. Though to be fair, I mean, I love Bad Idea, right? Great song, really, really good song. But I do think in general, Olivia tends to kind of like lean slightly more centre, slightly more acoustic, slightly more kind of serious. Even though she does have a lot of non-serious moments, that's, that is true. But this one is totally leaning right into the camp theatrics, you know, which is much more my kind of vibe, if I'm honest. <laughs> I'm a gay man from the UK. Even like all the straight men in the UK love a bit of camp. Let's be honest. It's just part of our tradition. <laughs> yeah, obsessed. H-O-T-T-O-T-O. Campus Christmas. Yay. Um, five, six, five, six, seven, eight. I could be the one, your new, your new addiction. Is it all in my head? But I want non-fiction. It's all in my head, but I want non-fiction. I don't want the world, but I take this city. Who can blame a girl? Call me hot, not pretty. Great. H-O-T-T-O-T-O. H-O-T-T-O-G-O. Snap and clap and touch your toes. It's like head, shoulders, knees and toes. I'm obsessed. <laughs> but it's sex. Oh my God. Great. Oh my God. Who thought, let's make head, shoulders, knees and toes, but sexy. <laughs> I'm obsessed, though. Woke up staring at my settings, try not to care, but it hurts my feelings. You don't have to stare. Come here, get with it. No one's touched me there in a hot damn minute. Yeah. So there's a sense of like, as much as the humour and the over the top, the camp stuff is like the kind of tentpole style of it. There is so much vulnerability in what she's saying within these lyrics. I really love that kind of, those two things in tandem, you know? Because it's like, it grounds it. It makes it feel truthful, even though there's like, you know, there's still the theatrics of it are there, you know. Oh, it's great. Oh, so good. Okay, next song. This is My Kink is Karma. <laughs> Oh, I know this one. It's this one, isn't it? Oh, why do I know this? This must have been the, the breakout song or something, right? I thought this was like Selena Gomez or I don't know. I Katie, you losing it Why do I know this song? Maybe it's like common playlists or something, or Spotify's played it or something. Ah, I see. People say I'm jealous, but my kink is karma. Watching it all come back around. Great. <laughs> Using your distress as foreplay. Oh my god. I'm obsessed. It also is giving me Conan Gray vibes. That's very good agree. He's got a new album coming out. People think I'm jealous, but my kink is watching. You guy. Oh my. I have no idea what the lyrics are. As you remember, we tell. Yeah. Taking, like, satisfaction in the demise of someone who's fucked you, you know? Really great, satisfying song. Oh, hell, and you're hating yourself. I'm feeling myself. It's hard mm. when you know that you're... Yeah. Watching you That is so clever. To, like, build it up and split the tension like a knife with that spoken section is just so nicely done and what a great way to put it and actually to frame it within the rest of the album the kink side of things you know because she's been talking about her sexuality plain as day love it and so that so then to phrase this like i'm taking satisfaction in your downfall but like framing it within that kind of sexual narrative like I'm actually getting sexual pleasure from your from you crashing your car and you breaking your heart and all this shit from the revenge. Like it's just a clever way to like tie it into the rest of the album as well as writing something that's really quirky and catches people's attention, you know? Yeah, clever, really nicely written. I can understand why that popped off. I don't know why I know it. It must have like come on on a playlist or maybe it's on one of my friends' playlists or something. But I'm like, I know this song. Anyway, we broke up on a Tuesday, kicked me out with the rent paid, ruined my credit, stole my cute aesthetic. <gasps> if karma's real, hope it's your turn. You're losing it lately. Move back with your parents and date girls who are 18. 
It's hot when you have a meltdown in the front of your house and you're getting kicked out. It's hot when you're drinking downtown, you're getting caught out because you're running your mouth. Oh God, it's coming around. Yeah, it's coming around. People say I'm jealous, but my kink is watching. You ruin your life. You losing your mind. You dyeing your hair. People say I'm jealous, but my kink is watching. You crash your car. You break in your heart. You're thinking I care. People say I'm jealous, but my kink is karma. That is so, so, so cleverly written i'm obsessed with it i just think that's so genuinely brilliant you crashing your car and i love again this is like showing another side of the kind of vulnerability because she's like obviously heartbroken about this person and is delighting in the kind of demise of their life you know (laughs) it's great so good and like something that i think we can all relate to (laughs) i'm not gonna lie i have felt that way before about aforementioned pre-mentioned person that I told you about in the last song I'm obsessed with this album this is like so totally my vibe okay next song this is Picture You (sighs) I see trees of green red roses too or not (laughs) <laughs> Light every candle. God, her voice sounds different. It's almost like a Lana Del Rey song. Every I love that. Ah, horror movie strings. I need you cool. I picture you. That makes sense after Kick's Karma. I'm scared to say half the things I do when I picture you. More with the vulnerability. I really like how her emotions are really like up and down, wacky all over the place, but she's true about everything. I like that bit. Do you picture me? Do you feel the same? Even though she's delighting in the demise of this person, she still does dream of that dream romance that she thought she was gonna have before it all went to shit. Do you picture me? I do. Well, I picture you. Yeah, I love it. Really nice, vulnerable moment after like a angry song, you know, to kind of be like, actually, I'm actually too afraid to actually. It's quite something quite vulnerable in saying like, I can't actually even admit the kind of things that I still picture when I picture you, you know? Yeah, gorge. And nice that she can kind of pull off a ballad, you know, in a more kind of classic sense. Draw the blinds, light every candle, slip off my pretty dress down my chest while I think of you every night, both lips on the mirror. It's ritualistic counting lipstick stains where you should be. So she's like kissing the mirror, almost like dreaming of this person. That's sad, huh? But picture you, it's like picturing herself. Like in the mirror, there's like a kind of strange kind of like thing there you know especially when she said i need a super sexy modern girl like me like she needs someone like herself and now she's looking at herself in the mirror and kissing herself in the mirror and wishing it was somebody else there's kind of like a strange kind of connection there am i in the frame from your point of view do you feel the same i'm too scared to say half the things i do when i picture you tell me now your perversions am i doing research in a mini skirt at the library in your hometown so it's like a porn thing so this is kind of a masturbation right she's like picturing this person still like masturbating over them dreaming of them and she's like are you still doing that over me like hoping that maybe they are because she then kind of almost gives her a bit more worth because she feels like she's lost her sense of self-worth here you know quite clever and still has that kind of quirky sexy edge to it you know messy sexy edge as well you know okay next song this is kaleidoscope What's the instrument? It's like giving me like Venice guitar or something, maybe? I don't know. Everything has changed. You really want to leave. I'll never make you stay. Fine. Wow. Go back to being friends. Love is Really classic so chords. Turn it to and the melody is lovely. I love how her voice goes into that mixed register. Yeah, it's much more complex. Oh, oh, lovely. Love that kind of lilting. Put it all in words. Go back to being friends. And love is a kaleidoscope. So there's a sense of like changing, moving, our relationship morphing, not be able to see the truth of it because the kaleidoscope kind of blocks out the truth in a way, you know, it all gets mixed up. I love that. Oh, wonderful. Beautiful. Yeah, that is really, it's got some really nice 
references in that like sonically it seems to be referencing kind of like old european ballads like the way the strings work the way the piano works it's kind of reminding me of like french pianist on the street kind of in the courtyard romanticism you know it's that kind of character super sad love song but also kind of still has a kind of sense of theatricality to it you know yeah Cool. Nice. Yeah. Here we go again. Everything is fine. I guess we could pretend we didn't cross the line, but ever since that day, everything has changed. The way I write your name, the cursive letter A. I like that little detail. Even that kind of reminds me of like old European vibes, you know, the cursive writing. Whenever it may be that you go on your way, if you really want to leave, I'll never make you stay. Whatever you decide, I will understand and it will all be fine. Just go back to being friends. And love is a kaleidoscope. How it works, I'll never know. And even all the change, it's somehow all the same. That's clever metaphor. Turning left and right, colours shining in your eye, and even upside down, it's beautiful somehow. It's just never a shape alone. Love is a kaleidoscope. I really love as a metaphor, like the idea that like, no matter which way you view it, it's beautiful. Even if it's fucking sad, it still has beauty to it, you know? It's never just one single obvious thing. It's like this myriad of different colours and shapes all forming on one another. Very difficult to understand, very difficult to pass through, but like it's still beautiful either way. That's really gorgeous and sad. And like it speaks to like the changing nature of a kaleidoscope being the changing nature of her relationship with this person, you know. Yeah, very nicely, very maturely, nicely written. Really like that. It's like amazing to see that she can pull off both the ballad and the kind of hyper up-tempo stuff. I think personally my favourite stuff in this album is the super cartoonish over-the-top stuff. But like the sadder stuff makes the happy stuff, you know, super graphic, ultra-modern girl. Like it feels like that is a song that's like her putting on this like armour, this suit of armour in order to get back out there type of thing because of the context of the sadder songs, you know. Let's go to the next one. This is Pink Pony Club. <laughs> First I was afraid <laughs> I know you wanted me to stay Love me in LA Where boys and girls can all be queens Every single day Yay, Lovely. love it I swear it's calling me On a screen God, what oh. have you done? And you dance at the club oh. Yeah Oh, I love it On at the I love this. I love this. West Hollywood's the gay bit, right? <laughs> yeah. Love is in the bathroom and the line outside the door. Oh, it's like the safe space of a gay bar. Being able to find your group of people and finally feel like you belong because of the freedom within a queer space, you know? It's gonna cause a scene And it's this idea that a small town girl, you know, the Midwest princess Actually has far more kind of to offer And far more queerness in her Than is expected of someone from a small town, you know When you grow up in a small town and you're like a queer person You can feel like a fucking unicorn And you're like, I just want to express myself and be myself, you know And going to these kind of city areas where there's like so much freedom in being queer that just is so life affirming, you know. Yeah. Still love you in Tennessee, you're always on my mind. Yeah. I can hear your southern draw a thousand miles away. <laughs> so she misses her mom. It's like, I still love you, like, you're still my family, even though I've left. But I need to do this, you know. <sighs> God, this is something that like so many queer people would be able to relate to, you know? This idea of like needing to move out of a small town in order to find your tribe, you know? Oh, a fade out. I thought I'd turn the volume down. Don't get fade outs very often, do you? Oh, I loved that. A beautiful song to kind of really just speak about an experience that is so prevalent in the gay community. So, like, was, like, a story of my life, you know, moving to the city. Like, obviously living in London is so expensive, but, like, like for me, like, there's no way I could live in my hometown. Like, I obviously have my family there. I have friends there. I love them dearly. And I know they care about me and I care about them. But 
Like in order for me to be happy, I have to be living in a place where I have people around me who get it, you know, where I can go to a gay bar, wear whatever I want. Like I can walk down down the street wearing whatever the fuck I want and like no one will bat an eyelid. Like in my hometown, I used to wear a fucking pink jumper and people would be shat gay across the street of me, like little fucking dweeb teenagers. Here, like I went to see Lady Gaga and I dressed up like in full like boots, like full pink makeup, like crazy beer cans. I put the beer cans in my hair, did the whole thing. And like no one even looked. People didn't give a shit. It was great (laughs) and that's what it's like moving to a city and having kind of queer spaces you know where you can just express yourself it's so life-affirming and it's so important and I love that she put that into a song and really captured that feeling so nicely but she didn't leave behind the family she still cares about them she still was clearly mentioned like her home her roots in Tennessee and the way where she's come from and how she still has a mum's voice ringing her head like I don't think my mum would be proud of what I'm doing but I need but that's not why I'm doing it you know at some point you kind of need to let go of constantly seeking your parents approval for everything and just do something because it's your instinct you know like our parents don't necessarily know our generation so at some point you have to kind of like let go of that something that i've like contended with in my head because i've always been a bit of a people pleaser <laughs> you know yeah okay next song this is naked in manhattan <laughs> so she's flown across the other side of the country new crush high school love again slumber party kissing <laughs> constant like boys suck <laughs> so this is like a kind of nostalgic thing, huh? Maybe. Could go to hell, but we'll probably be fine. <laughs> oh, love it. Maybe her first queer experience. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love the drums and the bass. Love that, that little like drum fill. Mean girls, we watch it every night. <laughs> I was getting Mean Girls vibes from earlier in the album, to be fair. Like we were saying in the previous song, maybe this is more her first experience of visiting somewhere and having this complete freedom to do these things that she feels like she needs to experience, you know? I love it. This is so fierce. Actually, it's really cute. I really like the cuteness in this. It still has this like really fun approach to sex, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this. Filling in the rest of the production in this chorus and it's so satisfying. There's like some offbeat guitar riff. It's only been coming in the drum fills, but now it's throughout the whole chorus and it's just teasing you. Now it's like, eh, I love it. Mm, great. I love this kind of modern song production style that's like, it's not just like come up with a loop, loop it, sing a song over the top. It's like tailor made. Every section is tailor made as it goes. And this the production, that was so sick. I just love that, that kind of bit of drum fill that was teasing what was going to happen in the in the final chorus so that when that final chorus came around it really just felt so satisfying it feels like the build-up is so intelligent and so nicely crafted you know yeah it's great oh and again like queer early queer experiences her being like i've never done this before but let's give it a go let's get naked in manhattan let's have this holiday this experience it's like when you go somewhere when somewhere new you can kind of try on new clothes and see if it suits you you know it's that kind of energy oh when she's comparing Comparing it to like a new kind of almost like teenage experience because it's like even though she's not a teenager anymore maybe she's re-experiencing that adolescence by discovering her bisexuality maybe slightly later on that's kind of what I'm getting from the whole vibe and the fun and the frivolity of it it's like this delayed adolescence thing something that me and my boyfriend have talked about like because obviously our relationship is both of our first relationships and even though we're in our 30s feels like It's something that wasn't afforded to us as queer kids from small towns. You know, we didn't have that teenage romance. We didn't even have that in our 20s. Well, I met him literally the week before I turned 30. So I guess I did technically have it in my 20s. You know, and like, so a lot of the stuff we've been doing, like other people might think of being as being corny or whatever, but we never got to do the cute date shit. And so we're like, fuck it, let's just do it now. And that's the vibe I'm getting from this song. It's like reclaiming your kind of lost 
youth in that sense, you know? Yeah, fabulous. Oh, this album is so sick. I'm obsessed. It's really, really nice. <sighs> and it's gay. <laughs> Next song, this is California. I've gone back across. across four states where my dreams lay amber. It's about moving to California. So she's letting us in more about the move away from this from the safeness of home. And maybe you should go. No leaves are brown. Reference to uh all the leaves are brown. California dreaming. Oh nice. I love the like dynamics in this. Drums, oh great. Never told that I wasn't gonna get things I want the most. Come get me out of California. Now I miss the seasons in Missouri. So there's a sense of missing her hometown, her dying hometown. Like, I miss the seasons. Like, what went wrong? Huh? There's a moment here of like having moved to the place where it's all supposed to happen, but it not quite all coming together in the way that she'd expected. Maybe it is now though. Ooh, nice, I love that horn. Aww. It's like saying to your mum, like, come get me. I miss you. That's sad, huh? Gorgeous. Wow. There's like a bit of regret in that song. It's like I left my hometown for these dreams, but it hasn't actually kind of been all it was cracked up to be. Yeah. And now I kind of, it's, it kind of is like calling your mum and saying, can you come get me? You know, but I feel like she's obviously found so much freedom in moving to this place, but maybe this is just a moment of like kind of vulnerability, a moment of like, Maybe maybe this is more like career focused and she, and in this moment she was still struggling to kind of make her mark, you know, and she was starting to regret it a bit. But yeah, I don't, I don't I'm not sure what the story would be, but I really love that. Like the the build up of that song, like the texture in it, like the the way it kind of had like loads of, went to loads of different places, like throughout its kind of three minutes runtime. Like we had the bit with big with the drums. I really loved those kind of distant horns, like there's so much in it, you know. Also, that central kind of thing in the chorus where it's like, all the songs that have been written about California, California Dreaming, all oh, the leaves are brown and the sky is grey. California Dreaming. It's almost like the other side. It's like someone's been dreaming of California, but then when they've gone there, it's like, actually, I do miss the brown leaves and the grey sky. That's what it's giving me. Yeah. It feels like a very clever way to reference a song that everybody knows, you know. Yeah, like kind of do it from the other perspective. Like I actually miss the brown leaves. I miss the seasons, you know. I stretched myself across four states, New Lands, West Coast, where my dreams lay. So I was never told that I wasn't going to get the things I want the most. Yeah. But people always say, if it hasn't happened yet, maybe you should go. Come get me out of California. No leaves are brown. I miss the seasons in Missouri, my dying town. I thought I'd be cool in California. I'd make you proud. To think I almost had it going, but I let you down. Too hard to find reasons to stay, even true love could not persuade. It's almost like the kind of like, there's this like, especially with our generation, like the Glee Kid era, you can achieve your dreams, you can do everything if you put your mind to it, but sometimes that's just not exactly the way it goes. And like, it kind of does feel like for our generation that like we were kind of, everyone was promised the same thing, but not everybody can have that success. There's not space for everybody to become a me mega famous pop star. Do you know what I mean? So it's almost like the kind of, she feels like she's been fed a lie in that way. I relate to it in a way. I don't think I ever kind of got to the point where I was like, I felt let down by those promises. I feel like I have always like pushed towards doing things I wanted to do as with the channel, as with the podcast, as with like, you know, now I'm making a career out of it. But what has changed is what I actually wanted. I think we're told when we're teenagers, you have to kind of, you have these dreams, you have these ideas of what you're going to be and that's what's going to happen, you know, and things change, you know, and I had to kind of learn to kind of morph with it. I think like when I was a teenager, it was like, I want to be a musical theatre star. And then I was like, oh, no way, I'm too gay to do any of the lead roles. Okay, maybe not. And then it was like, oh, you know, I'm going to be a pop star. And it's like, actually, I don't think I'd want that level of fame. But it's like, I still love writing music and making music, but it's like, 
now I'm like, now I'm envisioning it like I do it in my own kind of niche way. Like I put it out for the people who care about what I have to say. And that's, it is what it is. And I, and it's the love of making music that's the important thing. I mean, it took me a long time to get to get to that, I know, I think. And that's, I feel like maybe it's kind of similar to, to this perspective where it's like, actually the, those kinds of dreams sometimes morph and change and it's not as simple as you might have thought it was, you know. Before we go into the final song, this is the Patreon patron shout out. These guys get loads of bonuses on Patreon including in different tiers, the different tiers, different things. You can be part of the Discord community. You can get my videos unedited with no cuts in any of the songs. You can actually request songs and albums in the upper tiers and you get access to extended cut and video version of my podcast. Oh, and on the podcast side of things, you can also have a chance to be part of the Patreon call-in special as well, where you get to give me underrated songs that could get placed within the underrated playlist. Head over to Patreon for all the details. And yeah. Thank you to everyone who is supporting. You're a beautiful, lovely community of people. And I could not do what, I, what I'm doing without you. Last song. This is Guilty Pleasure. Ooh, very warm guitar. Lovely. This album's really morphed. It still has consistency, though, like in the attitude, you know. We'll start in my head. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Weird. Totally different vibe. <laughs> I love this idea of relishing in the, the guilty pleasures, you know. That is such a weird key change, but I actually kind of love it. it kind of goes, mm. <laughs> Some good girls do bad things too. Just because you love the naughty, weird stuff, that's not your entire personality. We're complex beings, you know? Like, no person can be a paragon of perfection, you know? Ooh, love that synth bass line. Give me life. The production on this album has been so brilliant, so quirky and unique and fun and really just bonkers. Yeah, nice. Fizz. Cool. Yeah, really fun. Like quite a kind of interesting up song for the end i wondered whether maybe the rise and fall would kind of have the euphoria and then the fall and would end with the fall but it feels like there's i think that song is supposed to be the ups and downs everything's fine and that's the kind of you know this idea of guilty pleasure it's like two sides of the same coin you know, and I think this I think maybe that fits into the album because she's like, yes, I might have got to this point where I kind of regret some of the things I've done and maybe I feel like I failed in a way. But actually, what would life be if you hadn't even tried? You know, life is the ups and the downs and that it is what it is. And let's just relish the fact that we have that. And, you know, actually the highs wouldn't be as good without the lows. And that feels like that that actually really plays into the way that the entire album functions, you know, like the highs wouldn't be the same without the lows. As I was saying earlier, like ultra sexy modern dream girl, whatever it is, wouldn't have been as euphoric if it hadn't have come like right after coffee and casual where it's like the heartbreak side of things you know they're not being able to get over somebody and then it's like bam I can get over you because I'm gonna go find a super graphic ultra modern girl like me you know I'm gonna stand in this kind of powerful stance you know and so for the last song to kind of like tie those kind of two sides of things together I think it's very astute and very clever learned it on the internet Will's turning in my head think back to what you said and I turn red wild thoughts that make me melt a good hit below the belt sometimes I scare myself but I can't help what I can't help so shame so th this is kink <laughs> This is her being like, I am kinky and that is fine. You know, <laughs> I'm going to just enjoy my guilty pleasures, you know, like finding it online, fantasizing about it. You know, I'm a good girl. I do bad things too. Like that is absolutely fine. Like you can, it's about being who you are, expressing who you are, being okay with who you are. Like, even if like some of the stuff you're into is a bit weird, you know, or a bit like not expected, a bit bad, you know, it's like that doesn't define my entire personality. I can still be the good, the good girl, but 
I can still like the bad stuff, you know, or whatever it is, you know, the dirty stuff, the perverted stuff. There we go. <laughs> can we drag it out and never quit? Oh, oh my God, you are heaven sent with your dirty mind. Yeah, you're perverted. Give me guilty, guilty, guilty pleasure. So shame on me, shame on you. I fantasize what we would do. I love it. It's like really relishing in that thing that you should feel shame about, but you don't feel shame about it because it is truly pleasurable. Actually, that kind of really sums up, I think, a lot of what like I was saying about like, obviously the, the highs and the lows of everything, but also sums up like her attitude towards her sexuality, her discovering her sexuality, the positivity within her sexuality that she's now discovered that she found by moving to California. So even though I'm not sure what happened, maybe it's the heartbreak, maybe it's the career that's not quite coming together at this point when she wrote this, obviously something to change now, but you know, and maybe she feels like she's failed and that's the rise and the fall. What she's learned along the way is this kind of ability to take pleasure in things, even if she felt like in the past, maybe she should have been shameful of it. But now she's like, no, I don't feel any shame. It's just pleasure. You know, you tell me it's a guilty pleasure, but truly it's pleasure. It's just pleasure, you know? Yeah. So that really feels like it ties it all together brilliantly. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Like, and it, like, it feels like the album itself, the sound of it, the feeling of it really does kind of encapsulate the kind of mad, wild ride that she seems to have been on. It's like a mad, queer explosion of like discovery of her sexuality and her life and her career and her and the fun and the, you know, moving from a small town to a big city and like the kind of madness that kind of ensues that permeates through all the songs, the highs and the lows of it. It's just really, really, really well done. It feels like it just comes together and tells a story, not only through the lyrics and the, you know, the literal side of things, but also just the sound and the vibe. Brilliant. Yeah, that's really great. And so totally on my street and gay and great and brilliant. And yeah, I'm going to say my favorite song. You will not be surprised that my favorite song is Super Graphic Ultra Modern Girl. That one just fucking went off. Off, off, off. That really was the most euphoric high point of the album. And I just adored it. I just thought it was just absolutely camp nuts bonkers, fun, brilliant pop tune that we all need in our life. And it's about being gay and just like, or not being gay, being bi <laughs> for her, in her, you know, for me. <laughs> but um, finding somebody of the same sex as you and finding freedom and joy and power in that, you know, and leaving all the skanky boys behind. <laughs> love it. Like the queer anthem we all need in our lives. I love it. I loved that. Make sure to let me know what your top five songs are. I really want to know what your faves are, whether you're going to go on the side of the, the highs or the lows or a mixture. If you want to check out my Slater reaction, it's here. If you want to check out my reaction to Ariana Grande's brand new album, it's here. 